magic word We're in the secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Welcome to the Secret Kindergarten Radio Show on Revolution Radio. Are you feeling sad? Did someone say you're bad? Do you want to cry? Are there tears in your eyes? Well, stand yourself up straight before it is too late. Step on through the gate to the Secret Kindergarten with your mate Gino. That's me. And I showed my mum... <laughs> my radio show and she listened to the song and said that is out of tune you know you're singing out of tune <laughs> and you know what she's right but that's okay everybody has a song to sing <laughs> and funnily enough that's the title of this song by nancy stewart because it's music time let's have a listen to some music Every birdie has a song to sing Every birdie has a song to sing You hear it singing all day long For a birdie has to sing his song Every birdie has a song to sing And every baby has a song to sing Every baby has a song to sing Though it won't have any words, it's the sweetest song you've ever heard. Every baby has a song to sing. Every mother has a song to sing. Every mother has a song to sing. A song for singing when it's light and a lullaby to sing at night. Every mother has a song to sing. Every daddy has a song to sing Every daddy has a song to sing You hear him holler out a song Or humming quietly along Every daddy has a song to sing Every grandma has a song to sing Every grandma has a song to sing when she sings her song to you, then it becomes your song too. Every grandma has a song to sing. Every grandpa has a song to sing. Every grandpa has a song to sing. A song of happiness or strife, a song he's carried all his life. Every grandpa has a song to sing. Everybody has a song to sing Everybody has a song to sing And when we're singing the same song You know we just can't do it wrong Everybody has a song to sing And when we're singing the same song You know we just can't do it wrong Everybody has a song to sing Everybody has a song to sing. Ladybug, here's what we can do. We can count the spots on you. Little mouse, little mouse, where did you go? Are you in the red house? I don't know. A 
It's nature time! Today, we're going to talk about the sun. The sun! The sun's warmth is vital to all life on Earth. Ancient people used the sun's rising and setting to predict seasonal changes for the harvest and even erect temples. The sun is a star! It's one of 100 billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy. It's a big, round, glowing ball of hot gas. The reason that the sun appears so much brighter than other stars in the night sky is because the sun is at the center of our solar system. Eight planets, asteroids and comets rotate around the sun. The sun with all those planets revolving around it and dependent upon it can still ripen a bunch of grapes as if it had nothing else in the universe to do. And that's why we love the sun. It's amazing. The sun has a lot of pull. It makes up more than 99% of the total mass of the solar system. Because it is so massive, the sun exerts a lot of gravity or pull on the planets, enough to cause them to orbit around it. If the planets were not moving forward fast enough to balance the sun's sideways pull, they would fall into the sun. Ah! We would be cooked. <laughs> All right. It's a nice sunny day here in New Zealand. And my cat's happy about that. She does not like rain. She does not like cold. She loves it when the sun is shining and then she's a happy cat. And she's sunbathing right now on the concrete because it's nice and warm for her. We are going to play an audiobook that stars a boy that can fly and of course there's the sun in it. It's a moral story and it's called The Boy Who Flew Too High. The Boy Who Flew Too High. Hello, this is Natasha. And I'm dropping by with a famous little story about a father and a son who could fly. Bertie told me that it's rather a sad story but you should listen anyway, even if you usually like happy endings, because this tale has an important lesson. In fact, it's such a good story that it's worked its way deep into the minds of many people. You will often hear it referred to in songs, films and other stories. For instance, there's a song that goes... You fly too high, you walk too fast. And Queen and Joni Mitchell and all sorts of bands have written songs that refer to it. The boy in the tale is called Icarus and his name crops up all over the place, like in the James Bond film Die Another Day and in Planet of the Apes and even in computer games. So there's clearly something about this story that makes people remember it all their lives. I've told you before about the half-man, half-bull called the Minotaur. This strange and terrible beast lived in a deep, dark labyrinth on the island of Crete. Well, you may remember that the labyrinth was created by the cunning and ingenious mind of Daedalus. Daedalus was a brilliant architect and inventor. In fact, he was so brilliant that King Minos of Crete did not want to let him go back to his home in Athens. Instead, he kept him as a prisoner. 
Daedalus lived with his son Icarus in a tower of the palace and King Minos made him invent weapons of war that would make his army and navy even more powerful than they already were. Although Daedalus and Icarus had every comfort that they could ask for, the father longed to return home to Athens. His son hardly remembered his home city, but he too wanted to leave because he longed to run and play in the open rather than be in a tower all day. Daedalus looked out over the waves of the Mediterranean Sea and he realised that even if they could manage to slip out of the tower and find a little boat, they wouldn't be able to sail very far before they were spotted and caught by one of the ships of King Minos's navy. He thought for a long time about the best way to escape and finally he came up with a plan. And this is what he did. He told King Minos that he needed feathers and wax for a new invention that he was working on. When these were brought to him, he took them up onto the roof of the tower. Here, he arranged them in four lines, starting with the smallest feathers and following those with the longer ones, so that they formed gentle curves. Then he began to stick the feathers together with thread in the middle and wax at the base. While he was working, Icarus played with the wax, squashing it between his finger and thumb and when the feathers blew away in the breeze, he ran after them and caught them. When Daedalus had finished, he showed Icarus his work. He had made the feathers into two pairs of wings. He fastened the larger pair to his arms and then began to flap them until his feet took off from the floor and he began to hover in mid-air. Icarus laughed with delight and could not wait to try out the smaller pair of wings. Over the next few days, father and son both practised with them until little Icarus was almost as good at flying as his father. Then one morning, Daedalus said to Icarus, Now, son, we are ready to leave this island for good. We shall fly home to Athens. But although you are now quite good at flying, you must not forget that it can be very dangerous. So listen to my instructions and be sure to follow them to the letter. At all times follow me, for I will find the way home. Do not veer off on a different flight path or you will soon be lost. And do not fly too low, or your wings will fill with moisture from the waves and they will become too heavy and you will sink down. Nor should you fly too high, or the sun will heat the wax and your wings will fall apart. Have you understood all that I have said? Little Icarus nodded to show his father that he had understood and then Daedalus led his son up onto the battlements of the tower, and like a bird leading her fledglings from the nest for the first time, he jumped into mid-air and flapped his wings, and Icarus followed soon after. If a fisherman or a shepherd had looked up just then, he would have seen two very unusual birds hovering above the waves. No doubt he would have thought that they had caught sight of two winged gods. For who could ever have believed that a mortal father and son had mastered the art of flight? Over the seas they flew, and at first Icarus felt frightened for he had never ventured very far in his practice flights. But soon he found 
that he was really good at flying. In fact, it was the most tremendous fun you could ever have. He began to swoop up and down with the seagulls. Wow, it was amazing. His father turned round and called, Icarus, take care. And for a while after that, Icarus obeyed his father and flapped along behind him. But then his wings caught a warm air current and he found that he could soar along and upwards almost without any effort. This was the life. He was floating ever so high above the waves and the ships down below were like tiny little specks. His father called up to him. Icarus, remember what I told you. Come down right now. But Icarus could not hear and his father could not catch up with him. Icarus was way too close to the sun and soon the wax that held the feathers together began to melt. Gradually his wings began to lose their shape and some of the feathers even began to fall off. Icarus flapped his arms frantically but it was too late. He had lost the power of flight and down he plunged into the sea. And that's the story of the boy who flew too high. Bertie says it's good to aim high, but it's also important not to lose your head with success and overreach yourself. I hope you enjoyed the story. And don't forget, there are loads more that you can find on storynori.com and on our iTunes page. If you like Story Nori, please tell all your friends about it. For now, from me, Natasha, bye bye. And that was The Boy Who Flew Too High with kind permission from storynori.com. What an awesome story. It's hard to get it right, but I believe in you, and I know you can do well. You just gotta believe in yourself. Let's play some more music! Round and around the sun we go In our solar system Round and around the sun we go In our solar system It's an easy thing to do Round and around the sun we go In our solar system Round and around the sun we go In our solar system Mercury's closest to the sun Then Venus, then the Earth we're living on Then Mars and Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus Neptune's the very last one Round and around the sun we go In our solar system Round and around the sun we go In our solar system We all thought until recently That Pluto was a planet too Now scientists say it's just too small And its gravity will not do Round and around the sun we go solar system round and around the sun we go in our solar system in our solar system in our solar system Never knew.
finally see what you look like You're a mighty awesome thing, black hole Black hole, your gravity's irresistible Black hole, better stay away from you Black hole, you even steal the light You're a mighty awesome thing, black hole Well, you used to be a star But one day you simply went too far When you exploded in space No, you imploded in space Now a black hole is what you are Black hole Your gravity's irresistible Black hole Better stay away from you Black hole You even steal the light You're a mighty awesome thing Black hole You're a mighty awesome thing Black hole You're a mighty awesome thing back home. Did you have your breakfast? Did you get a good night's sleep? Then you'll have lots of energy. Get up, get on your feet. Get up and shake, 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 shake your hands. Jump, jump, jump up and down. Turn, 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 turn around. Reach way up high and sit back down. Stirring up the molecules creates a lot of heat. So let's stir up the molecules Get up, get on your feet Get up and shake, 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 shake your hands Jump, jump, jump up and down Turn, 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 turn around Reach way up high and sit back down Put your hands together now and clap along with me Just like the sun that shines, you have a lot of energy Get up and shake, 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 shake your hands Jump, jump, jump up and down Turn, 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 turn around Reach way up high and sit back down Sunlight and light to heat, it changes all the time Moving, working, doing, energy's a busy guy Get up and shake, 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 shake your hands Jump, jump, jump up and down Turn, 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 turn around Reach way up high and sit back down Kids have lots of energy, they're always on the go Running, jumping, dancing, you need energy to grow Get up and shake, 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 shake your hands Jump, jump, jump up and down Turn, 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 turn around Reach way up high and sit back down Reach to the sky and sit back down. Energy, 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 energy. I want to read you a little poem about the sun <laughs> here we go don't you think the sun is bright I wonder where it goes at night does it sleep or does it hide or is the moon on its other side does it hide behind the hills Late at night, as outside chills? Do you think it needs to rest? From all that warming, it does best. 
Could it even have a home? Maybe in London, or even Rome? Or does it just float around? Moving slowly from town to town? Yes, I think it must do that. After all, the Earth's not flat. So the sun goes round and round, spreading sunshine on the ground. What do you think about the sun? Well, I know what my cat thinks about the sun. <laughs> she loves the sun and that's all she needs to know. When the sun's out, she's in the sun, sunbathing and getting warmth. And it makes her super happy. And that's the main thing. We well, have reached the end of another half hour of the secret kindergarten. Bye.